Welcome to Nothing But Dicta, the podcast where nothing is binding and everyone has an opinion. I'm your host, Nina Burris, and today I'm speaking with a guest who's been on the show before and is back to share more of her advice with our student listeners. Fatima Dariani Keenan is a senior law career counselor here at GW who focuses on diversity and inclusion advising. Fatima, welcome back to the show. It's nice to be back. Thanks for having me. So as students look for jobs and internships, what types of diversity opportunities do you think they should be aware of during their search? Well, being in D.C., it's a great place to look for and find these type of opportunities. There's a wide range. We have think tanks. There's also law firms. In terms of the timing, the 1L firm diversity positions, now's the best time to do them. They're usually in January till early February. And for 2Ls, it's usually late summer and early fall. There's also public sector diversity positions, as well as judicial internships. Increasing diversity in judicial internships is also a goal of a lot of organizations. And we have the ABA's JIOP Judicial Intern Opportunity Program as well that students can take advantage of. I think it's certainly good to know that no matter what you're interested in exploring with your career, there may be a program like this available to you. So how do some of these employers who offer programs like this define diversity? What should students know about that word as they're working on their applications? That's a great question. Diversity can be defined in many ways. It can be defined broadly and narrowly. What's important to remember, particularly about these programs and applications, is really how do the employers define it? How does that posting define it. So you want to read that opportunity very carefully and see how that organization defines diversity. Some examples, and it's not an an exclusive list, but it can be defined through race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, disability, and veteran status as well. I think it's good for everyone to know that these opportunities are worth checking out and reading over carefully. For many students who are looking for these and other job opportunities, the Career Center is going to be their starting place. How do you think students should use Career Center resources, including speaking with their career counselors, to find and apply for diversity opportunities that interest them and fit their needs? Yes, so we have a wide variety of ways to use those resources. I'll mention four. The first is signing up for the Diversity Opportunities newsletter. It is an easy way to find where those opportunities are. Law students are always very busy, and so sometimes they don't always have the chance to check into CORE. But you can sign up for it by going onto the GW Law Career Center website, and it's under the Contact tab. The last tab is called Newsletter Subscriptions. So we make it an easy way for you to sign up for newsletters on public sector, diversity opportunities, or judicial internship opportunities all at the same time. And the diversity opportunities newsletter is the second box that you would check there and you just put in your email and submit and you will get a monthly email regarding diversity opportunities. And it's not just employment opportunities. There are events that maybe firms sponsor or other organizations sponsor or scholarships or anything diversity related that a student may want to apply to. The second way is also checking in core. Many of our employment opportunities that are diversity related are in core. So doing a you know weekly or bi-weekly check is often a good idea and you can filter it by diversity and diversity related positions to see what new opportunities have come up. A third way is attending workshops. So we have a workshop specifically on diversity applications that was recorded and is available on our website under the resources tab on our Career Center website under diversity and inclusion, which is the second tab, you can find a template for how do I start a diversity personal statement? And you can also find a workshop that kind of runs you through the various types of questions and documents that are required in those applications. And lastly, we have, as you mentioned, speaking with a career counselor. All of us are in tune with diversity personal applications. So talking with us about what do these applications look like? What are the, some of the things that are asked in an interview? Reviewing personal statements is something that we do in the Career Center office, as well as the documents such as resume and cover letters that may go into a diversity application. So really, I would encourage students to 
take advantage of those four resources that I mentioned and seeking us out because we're here and we're happy to help. All of those resources are going to be very helpful. I think one of the questions that students often ask when they find out about a potential opportunity is where do I start? So those provide a great starting place for getting those materials together and understanding what the employer is asking for in the application. Fatima, on behalf of our podcasting team, I want to thank you for joining us on the show again and for sharing this information with all of our student listeners. I hope that this inspires them to seek out work that they're excited about doing. That's all for today's episode. If you'd like to listen to more podcast interviews with Career Center counselors, as well as other GW Law students, faculty, and alumni, you can visit nothingbutdicta.com or search for Nothing But Dicta on YouTube. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.